What are imaginary numbers? Before starting the lecture, click on the subscribe button and get access to our hundred of conceptual lectures for free. Firstly, let me teach you some algebraic equations and their respective solutions. For example, consider an algebraic equation x minus 6 is equal to 0. We know that the solution of this equation is x is equal to 6. 6 is a real number or it belongs to a set of natural number. We know that the set of natural numbers is denoted by n. So the solution of this equation lies in the set of natural number or real number. Secondly, consider x plus 3 is equal to 0. We know that its solution is x is equal to minus 3. Minus 3 is a negative integer and belongs to a set of integers R, Z. So the solution of this equation lies in the set of integers R, real number. Thirdly, consider 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. We know that the solution of this equation is x is equal to 2 divided by 3. 2 divided by 3 is a rational number or it belongs to a set of q. The solution of this equation lies in the set of rational number or real number. Fourthly, consider x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. We know that its solution is x is equal to plus minus square root of 3. What about plus root 3 and negative root 3? Well, plus root 3 and negative root 3 are irrational numbers. So the solution of this equation lies in the set of irrational numbers are real numbers. Finally, consider x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Let me solve it. We can write it as x squared is equal to minus 1. Taking square root on both sides, we get x is equal to plus square root negative 1 or x is equal to negative square root negative 1. Well, we know that root negative is neither a rational number nor irrational number nor real number and you can't find the value of root negative 1 using calculator. That's why in the school, we used to say that there is no solution for this equation or this equation has no solution. But now, you are going to learn its solution. It was Euler who gave a symbol i to the square root of negative 1 and called it unit imaginary number. Because we can only imagine square root of negative 1 and it is thought to be impossible. Thus, whenever you see square root of negative 1, remember that it is always equal to i, a unit imaginary number. Now, we can solve this equation easily by the help of unit imaginary number. Like x squared is equal to minus 1. Taking square root on both sides, we get x is equal to plus square root of negative 1 or x is equal to negative square root of negative 1. We know that square root of negative 1 is equal to i, our unit imaginary number. Thus putting i instead of square root of negative 1, x is equal to plus i or x is equal to negative i. As a result, we get two possible solution plus i and negative i for this algebraic equation. But both these solutions are imaginary. Therefore, remember that square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Our square root of negative 1 is unit imaginary number. Also remember that if you take square on both sides, you will get i squared is equal to negative 1. That's why we play with different powers of i and mathematics. To summarize my lecture, we learned that the solutions of different algebraic equations usually lie in a set of real numbers like 6, minus 3, 2 divided by 3 and plus minus root 3. Secondly, we learn that the solution of some algebraic equations like x squared 1 is equal to 0 was not possible. But now, 
with the help of unit imaginary number and considering square root of negative 1 as i, we can easily solve them. Thirdly, always remember that square root of negative 1 is equal to i, a unit imaginary number. This was all about imaginary number.